2 Corinthians chapter 13, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 says this, Examine yourselves as to see whether you are in the faith. I want you to look at those first two words and don't forget it. This is the greatest preacher of grace the world's ever produced. And he closes his letter to the Corinthians by saying, Examine yourself. Take a look inward. Now, he doesn't say examine yourselves as to see whether you're a filthy sinner. That would undermine two books worth of writing to the Corinthians. He's already told them, such were some of you, but you're washed, but you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of our God. He's he's not going to go undermine the entire uh, framework of the message of grace. He doesn't need to. What he wants to do is, I want you to examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. Take a look at your life to determine if you are where you need to be in this walk. Have you drifted away? Have you begun to put your own performance ahead of understanding who you are? Are you ignoring your own performance at the detriment of those around you? Test yourselves. I like how Paul goes farther than just saying examine yourselves. He says test yourself. Now personally, he does. here's the interesting thing. Paul does not write a follow-up to go, let me show you what testing yourself looks like. Because the reality is, is I don't think he has to. I think there's something down inside of us that realizes how we are to test ourselves in the faith, how we are to examine ourselves in where we are. And if we'll just watch how God questions people like Adam and Eve and the Cains, if we'll watch how Jesus interacts, we'll begin to see that test. Don't you know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you're disqualified? And Paul tells them in the next verse, but I trust you'll know that we're not disqualified. So look, you're not disqualified. You qualify. So you don't have to examine whether you're in Christ, but you have to examine whether you're in faith. And so there might be some areas of your life where you need a little introspection. And listen, here's why I think we've avoided the oughts. Part of the reason we've avoided the oughts is because we know that if you put oughts in front of people, they start to think about their own performance. If they think about their own performance, they start to think self-righteously. Because if I could do it, I could be more righteous. This is why we constantly work on righteousness and identity. Righteousness and identity. We work on it so that we'll have a base understanding that we are righteous and that we are what the Bible says we are, but so that we can move on and do something in the world without losing the identity of who we are in Christ. We, We have that in us. That's there. I think another reason... Uh, Why we are so scared to do any introspection is we've been scared away from sorrow as grace people. So anything that makes people a little bit sad or a little bit sorrowful, we're not going to talk about that because I don't want you people to be under condemnation. And we've mistaken condemnation for feeling bad. All right, well, let me do some work right there for a second. How about it? Condemnation is not, I was made to feel bad over that. So you know what? I'm not going back there because I don't believe I should ever be made to feel bad. Listen, the gospel's not about making you feel anything. All right? The gospel's not about, I want people to feel good. I want people to feel bad. When it becomes about that, it's not about Jesus. It's about your emotions and your response. Let's make sure they respond properly. That's not the gospel. That's psychology. Nothing wrong with a little psychology. We need to understand how people think. And we need to know how people respond. But it's not the gospel. Because the gospel is portraying good news. There's a king here. Now what if you don't like the king? Well, the gospel didn't ask you if you like the king. The gospel is good news. There's a king here. You go, what if I don't want to be subservient to the king? Gospel didn't ask if you wanted to be subservient to the king. Gospel said there's a king here and he has a kingdom. What if I don't agree the kingdom's here? Gospel doesn't ask if you agree. Get my point? So the gospel's not asking about your response. The gospel's not asking if you're happy about it. Gospel's not asking if you're sad about it. So what's happened is I think we're a little bit afraid to put any kind of introspection in lest people feel a little sorrow because they're not meeting where they want to be. The reality is, is a little bit of sorrow could get you to change your mind about what you're doing. And you might say, well, I didn't think I was supposed to change my mind out of guilt. It's not about guilt. You're not guilty in the eyes of God. You are righteous in the eyes of God. It's about sorrow that you've allowed yourself to run away from the place where you know you need to be. And there's something about it where you know you could change.